Welcome back to Globetrotting. Be sure to hit that subscribe button as I push for 50,000. When an aircraft manufacturer looks towards building a new era on an existing family, aircraft will typically be carried on in some form. This was evident through the likes of the A330neo over to the 777X, but when we take a look at Airbus's launch of the A320neo some time ago, as they continued to enhance their single aisle family, there was notably a very variant missing, the shrunken A318. To this day, there still isn't an A318neo. Why is that? The launch of the Airbus A318 marked a pretty important time for the European manufacturer. It must be said that the aircraft highlights the ability for Airbus to continue developing a popular body. In this case, it was shrinking the aircraft even further than what we had seen with the A319. Introduced in 2003 with Frontier Airlines, the A318 immediately became the smallest member of the broader A320 family, and it was designed solely with the intent to cater to markets that were deemed emerging. Airbus wanted airlines operating this type to focus more on regional and short-haul flights, this being achieved thanks to its compact design and, at the time, fuel efficiency. That meant, again, for airlines that were looking to operate this on routes with maybe, let's say, facilities in airports that were not totally at the highest level, or maybe there was demand, but certainly not enough for an A320, this is where the A318 would step in. However, despite the hope, of course, that the aircraft would succeed eventually, the A318 faced some challenges in really achieving a widespread success. Because why? Well, it was Airbus's actually marketing. It simply didn't have the capabilities of other narrow-body jets that were more attractive. And even though it was in the same family, yes, the A318 was fit for a purpose, but equally, that purpose that Airbus was marketing became a deterrence in regards to orders. So yes, it fitted into a niche, but it was not seen as an aircraft that would obtain thousands of orders. The A318 came about thanks to significant studies undertaken by several parties within Asia, who were studying the prospect of introducing a 95 to 125 seater aircraft, seeing Airbus as the provider. Initially dubbed the AE31X, a name that obviously didn't stand for several reasons, it's what eventually would come to the A318 that was being developed at Airbus. It would be apparent that such an aircraft would be required launching specifically in 1999 as a 107-seater aircraft. Several customers were, yes, interested. As the aircraft developed in the market, there was, like I touched on, very much less demand visible than, say, other types being produced. Additionally, Airbus began quickly in the mid-2000s to study, as we know, a new engine option for its A320CO. It had seen the significant amounts of success that the CO was enjoying, and it believed it could capitalise on that through an enhancement. What would this do? Well, it would put rival manufacturer Boeing under pressure and essentially get Airbus ahead of them regarding market share. We know what the development of the A320neo would force Boeing into doing. It would be a period known unanimously as one where wrong decisions were made to not lose further ground to Airbus, which also saw corners cut. Those corners cut would, who would have thought, in turn, see them lose ground. Airbus eventually launched the A320neo, new engine option, as an aircraft that would elevate its portfolio and, obviously, allow for customers to enhance their single aisle network. A lot of pressure was already being felt industry-wide to reduce emissions and ensure that aircraft types being introduced would be naturally more efficient than the last. This meant aircraft manufacturers studied hard to find ways to lower costs wherever possible. To address these concerns, with the A320neo family, it brought along several key enhancements. Additionally, the Neo was viewed as a way for Airbus to remain competitive in a market where airlines were consistently increasing their orders and looking at ways to lower their operating costs. 
However, notably an aircraft type, your A318neo, was missing from the portfolio offered. Well firstly, let me talk about performance. As I briefly touched on at the beginning of the video, the original A318 did not sell well by comparison to other aircraft types. Now maybe it was never touted as a 1000 say program seller, but it didn't perform adequately. Additionally, production on the smallest member in the series would close pretty early with the last unit being delivered in the mid to early 2010s. If Airbus struggled to create a firm market for its A318 because of the niche, would an investment in the Neo be worth it? Not necessarily, especially if you look at, say, niche markets for the A321XLR have grown into much larger than just initially what was thought of as a niche. That is an example of an extension on a popular family of aircraft that has been a long-term success. Some may argue that just because an aircraft isn't announced at launch doesn't mean that there wouldn't be a market for it in the future, and that is actually a very true statement, and we've seen that time and time again. Comments from Airbus executives in 2010 actually highlight that the manufacturer may have indeed to look towards an A318neo at some point in the future. At the time, however, the key executive also cited that at least for Airbus, they wanted to focus on more core products to be included in the A320neo series, rather than add something else into the mix. However, one thing that would dramatically change in the latter stages of the 2010s that would wipe out any need for an A318neo was Airbus taking over a little known thing as the C-Series and transitioning that into the A220. This aircraft family has proved to be a far more excellent alternative to airlines requirements than say what an A318 could have done and negated any reason to launch this even smaller. And while it has proven difficult at times Airbus to deal with, especially when surrounding talk of losses incurred during the production of the A220, the long-term benefits are seen to vastly outweigh what could have been achieved with the A318neo. Shifting trends have also seen airlines move away from aircraft types such as what the A318 would have offered. If they're looking for a short-haul regional aircraft in the Airbus portfolio, like I said, the A220 is going to lead the way. And if they are committing to, say, a single aisle in the A320neo family, in many cases nowadays to battle with capacity increases, airlines want larger aircraft, such as your A321 family. We are seeing this even more so with in 2023 Airbus's best-selling aircraft not being the A320neo, but rather your A321neo series with the LR and XLR being included in that. As always, we can sit here and think about what could have been if Airbus had moved ahead with the A318neo. But analysts and more, and probably yourself, will view the A220 as the perfect long-term option to fulfill what an A318neo could have been, and arguably it's probably going to do it a lot better. So what are your thoughts? It is over to you. Was it the right decision for Airbus to hold off on producing the A318neo in the end because they acquired the A220? If Airbus hadn't acquired an A220, do you believe they should have moved forward with an A318neo or maybe a clean sheet in the regional market? I'd love to hear your opinion. Thanks a lot for tuning into this video. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already to Globetrotting. Your support would be greatly appreciated. Take care and I'll see you in a couple of days for your latest aviation analysis. And we'll fly.